Hi, I wanted to share my finished sketchbook with you, the one that I've done for the sketchbook project that is showcased at the Brooklyn Art Library in New York when all the sketchbooks have come in and finished going on tour. They go back and reside over 40,000 uh, of these sketchbooks from all over the world. And I'm so pleased to be participating again. I've done this since 2011, and this is the seventh sketchbook project that I've completed. Uh, the cover is what you've been looking at, and on it is the theme, this one thing, dot, dot, dot. What's next? That's what I added to the theme, this one thing. Uh, I did a little spray iridescent sprays uh, random fashion on the cover and inside I started with just a little more about the theme and how I picked it. I tend to usually just jump in when I have to do something or want to do something. I, I sometimes have trouble starting so I just make myself do anything and then I go from there. So I thought what, what's next would be a good theme for me. Um, and when I started this, I kind of procrastinated for a while, and then I opened the blank sketchbook and said, well, what if I punched, used one of my round punches and punched a window? And I kind of liked that, and it, I ended up punching through every, every page in the book, and that kind of became part of the theme, what's next? Because you can see through the window to what's coming next. It's very interesting. Um, at least I think it's interesting. I hope you do too. I used a variety of things, even things that they don't really recommend because like acrylic paint or gesso because they have had some trouble with those things sticking to each other, or the pages sticking to each other if you use those. But I found through taking a class with Donna Downey that a product called Dorland's Wax um, which I just got online from an art supply store, works great. You just rub a little bit on, and then you take a soft cloth and buff it. And because it's got this waxy surface now, the painted pages don't stick to each other. I was having a lot of trouble with a book I made in the class with her, and this is what she recommended works great. So I did a lot of different things I did. Um, watercolor uh, crayons and watercolor markers that you could blend with a uh, water brush and this is a glass bead texture gel that I added different spray inks to. I used black gesso, did a little bit of sketching, you know I did not not do any sketching which is good I think. A little bit of doodling here, drawing the stars. I used things like um, golden fiber paste, which once it's dry it leaves a little texture depending on how much you put on it. And here I put over it, but I think I used both acrylic paints and uh, watercolor crayons and kind of mixed them together to get that. And gel pens on top of black gesso. This one is coarse molding paste. It's a little thicker than the fiber paste and I used a tool with little you know tongs, little marks to make those marks and then colored it with various acrylic paint I would think. The tissue paper is making these windows a little more opaque and I just carried that over on the entire page over there. That's a little bit of embossing powder which I still have in my stash from many years ago when I worked in a rubber stamp store <laughs> and they, I still like the little additions of things like this. Uh, lots of quotes in here because I love quotes. Um, I used to produce some rubber stamps that, that were quotes called Lena lines. That was about almost 20 years ago <laughs> but it was so still great fun. I don't do that anymore, but I still enjoy quotes and words, and I often have them in my work. So this is pretty typical for me. Tissue paper, little pictures I already had printed and 
knew I had these small pictures left over and went and found them and added them to go with the quote, life is full of beautiful moments, let them in. Highly <laughs> believe that. Um, more adding color to the page and adding a rubber stamp, which I love. It's a very kind of funny one uh, that actually is quite true sometimes, so I enjoy adding that to my work sometimes when I can. More of the glass bead texture gel, but a little different with different colorings. Look, I like how the leaf shows through to the next page with a lot of little Claudia Rose stamps some of my favorite that I still love to use today. A lot of inks. I always work with a lot of inks. I kind of like to switch back and forth. You know, these were colored pencils underneath there, but then I sprayed a little more ink on top, found some more words I liked. These are stencils. Same stencil, but just a little bit on this page and a lot on that page. Beautiful quote. The butterflies you see there are from the tissue paper on the other side that I use to give texture and to cover these very thin white pages that are in these sketchbooks. Over here we have the fiber paste kind of applied in a different way, um, paper toweling, more windows to look through, more quotes, more dye ink. This is coffee I spilled. <laughs> Not on the book exactly. It was over here on the side and I grabbed uh, grabbed it with a sponge and put it in the book just for fun. Um, acrylic paint. This is color box crafters inks that you can put on the page directly with sponge and then uh, use a heat gun to dry it so it's permanent. And then I stamped with permanent inks, stays on inks on top. The last page I just colored with some inks and I put a clear acetate sheet over just because it was kind of, of a flimsy page otherwise I didn't want the back page to be flimsy. And then I taped over the interior of the back cover. I don't know why, I think really to match the transparency on that side. And the back cover. So very soon this will go off to the sketchbook project at the Brooklyn Art Library. Thanks for watching.